So uh, my name is Daniel Lejosa. Let's talk about Kafka streams. Um, um, I'm, I think we're at the end of the day after this particular talk, right? So if I overrun by like five minutes, it's not, it's not going to cascade failures throughout. So I may run a little bit uh, overboard. This is usually a, um, uh, an hour and a half talk, but I'll see what I could do to try to get uh, at least most of it in. Uh, this right here is the uh, Dean Wampler architecture uh, image. And um, I'm going to talk about this. Now, I'm not going to discuss this overly in detail, uh, but Kafka is essentially the uh, data backplane for a lot of uh, our architecture. So what's great about this, even in a Kubernetes basis, is that uh, it's, uh, Kafka is distributed. It's wonderful for that sort of thing. We could send messages to it. So uh, one of the things that we could do as a microservice is um, you know, post messages over to Kafka. And then once we have this into Kafka, we could use Kafka streams, which you see over there on the uh, right-hand side, to start ingesting some of that information and do something with it. Um, there's something called Kafka Connect, uh, and Kafka Connect is number five. And we see that five there. It's kind of like a, an L shape where it just uh, dumps over to any kind of SQL storage, S3, any kind of HDFS. Uh, storage, that's what this particular uh, architecture is about. So Kafka is that middle plane. As long as you get a message to it, you could do whatever you want with it. And so if you wish to enrich all this data, that's where that Kafka streams really shines. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, I'm going to do a little quick introduction to Kafka. Kafka is a pub sub. You publish uh, some messages to it and uh, you subscribe to it. And that's, that's what it is. And it does that really well. It's uh, uh, very simple in design, but with some really interesting characteristics, uh, most of which I can't really, uh, just time constraint wise, uh, talk a lot about, but they really thought things through. And that's really one of the great things about Kafka uh, in how things are stored in memory, how things are stored on the hard drive, uh, and how quickly you get messages. So a lot of thought has been put in. That way you get a really high throughput uh, with Kafka. But the two ideas are that we'll have uh, producers and consumers, and we have to talk about that before we talk about any kind of streaming. So producers and consumers. A producer could also be a consumer. Oh, interesting. <coughs> what do I mean by that? Well, if we think about it, and if we think about, hey, a cons as we consume information, let's say I'm going to consume information from something, okay? Some, uh, some kind of message board. I'm going to consume the messages. What happens if I consume and produce at the same time? Oh, well, that's going to be the foundation of what a stream is. I will consume, then I will produce. Consume, produce, consume, produce. And then, uh, Kafka is uh, high throughput, millions of messages per second, distributed, replicated log, uh, real-time data processing, and stream processing of what we're going to be talking about. Let me see just a show of hands so we could interact a little bit more. How many of you use Kafka now? Okay. So for a lot of you, you, you know this uh, already. Sorry about the introduction, but uh, about half of you do not. So the idea is things are stored in topics. So uh, Lolita laid out some foundation for that. So things are in topics. We can send a message over to it. And uh, that message has a particular address. This is a monotonically increasing number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to uh, infinity. Okay. And messages are stored in what's called a partition. So there can be multiple partitions. You decide the number of partitions. That could be any, anywhere, number from 5 to 5,000. Okay? And each of these partitions are stored on different server class machines, different brokers, different containers if you're using Kubernetes. Data is temporary. And that's going to be the one interesting characteristic when it comes to Kafka is that the message are there for a period of time. You decide what that period of time is. Oops, sorry about that. It's 168 hours, aka one week, that the information is going to be stored on there. Okay? So data could just get deleted if that time is up, if that retention time is up. So that means that the beginning offset that you may see here may start at 201 or 5,986 or 10,529,940. <laughs> okay? So uh, that number could be that original starting point in here. Now, that's where that Kafka Connect really shines in. 
uh, if I want to permanently store the information that goes into Kafka, I'll put that in that permanent data store. That may be your traditional RDBMS, or that may be an HDFS uh, compatible storage to it. So data is temporary, and we'll just add on, and the new uh, location would be uh, the next number up. These messages are immutable. You don't go in there and fish. So in other words, you don't go into uh, offset number 203 and say, you know what, I just want to add a little bit of information to that. No. All the messages, and so what makes this fast is that these are immutable messages. We're just adding onto a stack, okay? So how are messages consumed? Nom, 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 okay? They're consumed like this, and a consumer will consume the messages off of this partition. A consumer will be assigned a partition in which we consume off of, okay? And that's going to be an important part, particularly when we uh, talk about streams. Consumers are offset, we're marked, so like the last time I've been here uh, is at three, so when I start again, I'll start reading from three, is how Kafka works internally. And then once I read, every, eight, once I read everything, I'll mark on the next one. Not the one I just read, but on the next one I'm about to read, is the way Kafka works internally. So if I just read up to four, mark, my next mark is gonna be at five, okay? And that's the way we do that internally. We could read from the beginning, we could read from the end, we could read from any particular location, we could read from the hard drive on a local storage. Hey, what is it? Oh, it's three, okay, then I'll go ahead and start from uh, the four location, okay? So I could read differently. The idea behind Kafka is that everything is distributed. So in this case here, let's say I have uh, three machines, whatever machines means nowadays could be physical boxes or it could be um, uh, pods in a uh, Kubernetes cluster, what have you, okay? But let's say I have these uh, particular brokers. And uh, I don't know if you saw that in the beginning here. Let's take a look over here. A0 is on machine number zero. See, uh, topic A, partition zero. Okay, so let's say topic A is, is touchdowns in, in the NFL, for example, okay? Then I'll have like partition zero, and let's say all the Atlanta Falcons are gonna be there, and maybe uh, the Minnesota Vikings are gonna be in that particular partition, okay? Uh, so depending on what your key is in that message, it may find itself in a particular partition. So let's say A0, uh, which A is uh, uh, NFL touchdowns, I will always find Atlanta Falcons and Minnesota Vikings just because that's the way the hash ended up. They'll all go into that one particular partition. And let's say A1, which is on a different machine, that's where uh, Dallas Cowboys and Seattle Seahawks are located, and uh, let's say uh, A2 is uh, where the uh, Patriots and the Ravens are located, okay? So, um, depending on what you have as a key of a message, they'll find its way to a, a particular broker where that information will get stored, okay? That's the way Kafka works. Uh, each partition's on a different broker, and therefore, each one of those topics is scaled. There isn't, like, one particular location. Now, Here's the thing, uh, one partition is stored on one particular broker, like A0, but that A0 is copied onto other brokers. There's always one called the leader, leader broker, okay? That leader broker is where all messages get written to and read from, that's called leader broker. Now on here you'll see the uh, chess queen type, uh, I make that the leader. So let's say the leader, A0, is on broker zero. Uh, B2, which is also the leader, is on this broker, and C1 is also on this broker. All reads and writes go to the leader, okay? Not to the followers. The followers are just pure replicas. They're there just for backup. They'll copy from the other leaders which reside on different machines. That's the way that works, okay? So I will always read and write to the leader. A1, B0, uh, C2, those are the leaders on this broker. And the pawns that you see here are merely copies of what we see on other brokers, okay? That's our fault tolerance. And it's also our high availability because all this gets stored on different brokers. So an important part to all this, and I know for a lot of you, you're like, uh, I've, I've, done, I've done Kafka before, I know what's going on. Um, but, you know, we need to lay a foundation before we talk about streams. So, uh, Kafka message. So what I send to these partitions are divided up by key value, okay? The key is gonna determine where these messages will go. The value would just be whatever kind of information I want to store, okay? 
That could be JSON, that could be Avro, uh, that could be any kind of payload that I want. Could be comma delimited if I'd like to. So let's say uh, these are NFL touchdowns, and so the key I may want to make Atlanta Falcons, okay? Uh, case sensitive, of course. And then let's say the payload is uh, who the receiver was, uh, who the uh, quarterback was, since this was a uh, pass touchdown, let's say these are pass touchdowns, how many yards was it? I got kind of a lot of data to describe, hey, what is in a touchdown? And that's what I would put inside of the value. So Kafka message, we, have the, we could either just have the message without a key, uh, but it's always nice to have a key. So similar to a row or record in a database, we'll send that message over to that particular partition. Now, most, uh, most likely you will have a key associated with it. So I'm gonna send a key uh, along with it, and that key would be Atlanta Falcons. And what's the point of the key? Well, if I have Atlanta Falcons uh, as part of the key, then that message will always find a way to one partition. It's gonna do a mathematical hash of it and do a modulo by the number of partitions. That means that message will always go to one place. Therefore, that also means all Atlanta Falcons will be in that partition. So if I ever need information about the Atlanta Falcons, I will always go to that one particular partition. And that's the way that works, okay? So it's the only time something's guaranteed to be in order. In other words, all the touchdowns will be in order by the, if I look for things via, uh, via the key, which is Atlanta Falcons, okay? And that's how I'll get things in order. So there are a lot of guarantees uh, with it. Messages sent by a producer to a topic uh, will be appended in the order they are sent. That's part of the immutability. A consumer, the thing that's gonna be ingesting it, sees the records in the order that they're stored in the log. And with the replication, we could tolerate up to N minus one server failures. So let's talk about, um, and since uh, just uh, on time here, let's just talk about the programming side of what is a producer and how do we uh, create a producer. So I created this, uh, this neat little producer in here. Let me do a presentation mode. Hell yeah, there we go. All right. So here's presentation mode uh, right in here. Uh, and on my IntelliJ, and I'm showing a producer. So let's take a look here. I have bootstrap servers, I have key serializer, and value serializer. This means that the key is gonna be a string and the value is going to be an integer, okay? And that's what I'm gonna send out. So what I'm gonna send here is that uh, I may have a state associated with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a little loop in here and I'm gonna create just some uh, standard orders in here and I'm gonna send this to a my orders topic, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna send that over. So this is the way I'm going to do that. I'm gonna create a record to a particular topic called my orders. Depending on what the key is, that's gonna to go to a particular partition, okay? So Kentucky will be in partition zero, I don't know what, what depending on the mathematical hash and how that's gonna be. Uh, Georgia is gonna be in partition two. I'm gonna create three different partitions. So let's see how this is going to roll. So first off, let me do uh, my orders in here. Uh, let me do that over here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my orders. So I'm going to create, I'm already in bin. <laughs> let's uh, do that. Okay. So I'm gonna create my orders, there we go. So I created the topic orders, but pay attention here. I did three partitions, okay? So in other words, my data is gonna go into either one of the three, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this now. Uh, let me delete all this. I'm going to launch this and I'm gonna run uh, my producer. There it is, okay? So here we go, my producer, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, state of Washington. State of Ohio, ooh, nice. So notice Washington, Washington is in uh, partition zero. Uh, Ohio is gonna be in partition two, you see that? Ohio will always find, uh, find its way into partition two, just because of the mathematical hash. That's the way things ended up working, okay? Uh, let's see, we have New Mexico, that's where I'm from. There's Florida, the crazy state. Anyone from Florida? I'm sorry about that, okay. So you, you already know that, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's going on. Uh, that looks pretty good. 
But now let me discuss here a consumer. Consumer pulls information from that particular partition, but remember, the messages stay there. I don't pull off of Kafka and then that message is no longer there. This is a shared message system. So if I pull a message off, that message is also available for any other consumer that is interested in it. Consumers work as a team. So let's take a look right over here and take a look at this consumer right over here. So uh, here we go. And here's my team name. My team name is my group, all members of a team. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run this same application. I'm gonna run this application three times, okay? Uh, maybe four, just to show you how they work as a team. Now, um, this will subscribe. In other words, start ingesting the information from this. And uh, let me show you what's gonna happen here. So this is running. It's running really fast. So let me do a tab over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run my consumer. So one instance of this, and what it's going to do as a consumer is start ingesting information from uh, this particular topic, and away we go. So consumer number one, here we go, woo, there we go. And what is it ingesting? So we got a lot of stuff here. And uh, somewhere in here, we will see what happens. Now remember, there's a single team name that is in play here, and here it is. I just happened to system out print line what this is bound to. So this says right over here that this consumer is listening to three partitions, zero, one, and two, okay? Now, what I'm going to do now is uh, do a new tab, and here we go, and run it again. Take a look at what's gonna happen here, okay? Because this is gonna be the foundation for streaming, which I'll uh, talk to you about uh, here momentarily. So I have my orders two. So the new consumer is now reading from partition two. Notice how all I did is just run a main method, right? Uh, in a different terminal, but this one's now picking up partition number two. And this right over here, something happened along the way, and let's take a look here. It lost one. This was my original consumer, but it lost two. I still have zero and one, right? The new one just picked up two. Now, I'm gonna do it again. So let's come in over here. I'm gonna run this again one more time. Here we go, woo! All right, so third one, I have three partitions. So we should have a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence between them, right? One, uh, one consumer to one partition, consumer to partition, consumer to partition, and there it is, okay? So my order's two, it's listening on that one. Let's see, this one got rebalanced. This is called a rebalanced partition. So this one got numero uno, and this one uh, got zero. And this is what I mean, like once everything is already deployed, all the Atlanta Falcons are gonna be processed by one consumer because a consumer is gonna be assigned to a partition. Atlanta Falcons are not gonna go to another consumer, okay? Uh, so this should remind you of High school registration, perhaps, uh, when you uh, registered for high school, you a lot of kids in there, and you were one of them. How, and uh, so they did distributed programming, and then they weren't even aware of it. Uh, and how do they do that? They set up desks, right? Actually, let's talk about DevNexus registration, same thing. How do they divvy up a lot of information coming in? They separate it by your last name, whatever your last name is. Same kind of thing here, except there's a murmur to hash that's going on with a key, and it's gonna to go to one partition always. So if I'm, let's use the NFL uh, touchdown analogy. All the Atlanta Falcons, again, will go to one partition. Or let's use our state analogy. All Kentucky goes to one partition. All New Mexico, all, hey, there is Georgia. I did that for you. So all Georgia goes to one partition, et cetera, okay? So they all have a home. Now, let's throw it, let's throw it for a loop here. What's gonna happen if I do number four, how many partitions do I have? Three, right? So let's take a look here. Gonna run this one. I don't know what's gonna happen and, and usually can't tell. Ooh, this one stole. Oh, terrible, that's just terrible. It just stole a partition from somebody else. Uh, some other consumer is unemployed right now because I have three partitions, right? So um, it stole from this one. I don't know what order I made but everything has its place here, 
okay? And we're able to see the information uh, from this. So these are the principles of Kafka. Now let's bring in a stream uh, in this case. So let me come in over here and uh, let's get into uh, the streaming aspect in here. I have to budget my time. So uh, let me talk about at least a little bit about compaction over here. So the idea for compaction is something that we need for streaming as well. Over time, things are gonna get, uh, get accumulated onto these partitions. And it's gonna look like this. So I have like a red key and yellow key right up here. Let's say red key is Atlanta Falcons, right? Because you know, Atlanta Falcons wears red. And your nemesis, who wears gold? Your, who's your nemesis? New, New Orleans, right? Yeah, I, I felt the, the, the brow just getting all angry. Any, uh, any Saints fans here? Okay. Anyway, everyone knows that rivalry. So, all right, so let's say uh, we have touchdowns with the Falcons and uh, the Saints right up here. And uh, let's do an operation called compaction. So what compaction is, is let's take the latest uh, Saints touchdown, let's take the latest Atlanta Falcons touchdown, and just keep the last ones. That, the, the idea here is called compaction. Okay? So the idea here is compaction, and why compaction? Because there are certain data in our lives where we don't care about the past, okay? Um, and usually that's like a count or a total or something that has to do with an aggregation or maybe just your data you don't absolutely care about. Like, let's say people are entering a stadium, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and let's say my total count of people who entered a stadium, let's say where the, uh, where the Hawks play, um, and uh, let's say, you know, 10,000 people have entered the stadium. Do I care at some point that there was five people entering the stadium? Probably not. Like, who cares if there was five at one point? All I care is about that end total. If you have data where you only care about something like that, this is why you would want to do a compaction. Okay? All right. Now, there's something called clean and dirty. After a while, you end up getting, like, dirty records uh, just because this is just new information and um, the process of compaction will just get rid of all... Um, you know, all the, all, the new, all the new stuff that arrived to kind of make things compacted again. So those are our foundations here for streaming. So let's talk about streaming and what it does. And you know what the producer and consumer is. You know what the partition is. A stream is just going to be some main method that you run on a separate machine, usually a separate machine, because we want high availability here, right? And so separate machines is a good idea or separate pods. And so the idea here is that a stream is a consumer producer. I will take something from this partition, I will do something to it, right? And then I'll just feed it back onto another topic, okay? That's what it is. And that's all it is, it's just a consumer producer. But a lot of things out here are uh, designed for you uh, so that way uh, you could lie to your boss. And that's always a nice thing to do, right? So manager or someone says, how long is this going to take? And uh, I urge you to lie to them and tell them this, this whole thing is going to take me like five months. Then you do it in one day. How much time do you have? Like take the rest of the, the, rest of the four months off. Right? And so that's the kind of thing that this does. Okay. So saves on some time. And that's the idea for stream processing. So let's, uh, let's do some cartoons here. Let's say I have a message and let's say I have an order for New York and uh, New York 100, okay? I could do things like filtering, and here's the filter here. So I'm gonna take this information, and uh, I just wanna filter. Is this, so these uh, database uh, uh, images here uh, represent a topic. So let's say I'm going to my orders for my topic here, and uh, what I want to do is, I just wanna ask if this is greater than 10,000. High value orders. If it meets that criteria, um, dump it, but this one didn't. So uh, it won't meet that criteria. But let's say I have an order from Ohio for 20K. That meets the criteria for it being greater than 10,000. So let's go ahead and put that into that new topic. Okay, pretty easy. But where things become a little bit harder is with aggregating. And that's why I wanted to create this particular presentation for you. 
So let's take a look over here. I have Ohio 100. And let's say on here, what I want to do is I want to do a group by, okay? Aggregation, group by. So let's say I want to aggregate all of Ohio's. I want to aggregate all of New York's. I want to aggregate or group by key is what this is called. So I want to group by key. So here's Ohio. And let's say with this grouping, so when you do a group, kind of like in the database uh, or functional program, when you do a group, you have to perform some kind of aggregate function at the end of this. So let's say at the end of this, what I want to do is I want to sum up all the orders from Ohio. There it is. Okay. So that message will disappear because it's already fulfilled its purpose in life. And then what I'm going to do here, notice this looks like a table. This looks like a database, uh, like a key value database that is being stored. And this is where we have this dichotomy of something called a stream and something called a table. Okay. And in Kafka, that's what exactly we call it. If it's like a river flow, if there's data moving from one end to the other, that is a stream. But this right here is, is, is a table. It's, it's holding on to that aggregate count. The analogy I always have for this are people entering a sports stadium. Um, what are those things called when you walk into a stadium that count how many people has, has entered that venue from where you enter the stadium? What are those called? Anybody? Turnstiles, yeah. You run to that turnstile and ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And there's a little, there's a little number there. Most, uh, most of us don't see it, but there's a little number there that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? Same analogy as I had before. Do you care about the past? No. I mean, this is just keeping a table value of this. Very much like you see up there with the Ohio and 100. Do I care that my aggregation that I had... Uh, you know, I had $5 in orders from Ohio in the past. Maybe not for this, because I'm, I'm doing an aggregation in here. So we have two representations of a stream and of a table. And what we see right over here is a representation of a table, which is a, uh, a database. It's an in-memory database called a RocksDB. Now, things will be stored in this RocksDB, like Ohio 100. And at some point, I may want to liquid, I like, I like using the word liquidate. Because right now it's in a table kind of storage. But I want to liquidate it, meaning let's turn it back into a stream. I notice I changed the color here. This one's orange just to tell you this isn't the same payload as you saw in the beginning. But now I'm liquidating this, and this is now uh, Ohio 100, and I'll put this onto a new topic. Boom. Nice. Right? So let's do it again. Here's New York. I got $20 in orders. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the summation, 20 and then I'll get a new message that here's the liquidating, and then in this particular new topic, I'll go ahead and post that, okay? One more time, here we go. Let's say I get another order from New York. Now this one's going to be uh, interesting. So let's say I do the group by. So the group by, then I have an order for 20 and 60, and what am I going to do with that? Well, let's go ahead and uh, sum it up, and so now New York will be 80. Now the liquidation happens. Let's liquidate that. Now what we'll have here is 80, and then we'll go ahead and post that onto the new topic. Now, what is it that we're going to get inside of that new topic? This is what it may look like. I'll have a different topic, and, oh, sorry about that. They'll have their own partitions, and let's say in partition zero is Ohio with a current, uh, with a current total of 100. But New York has had two updates to its total. Remember I had one order that was 20 and the other one that was 60? But these are the current running totals. And so I have 20 and 80. Now let me ask you this, do I care about the past? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but most likely you don't. You don't care about the past here because I only care about the latest total. So what would I do? Compact it. Do you see what happened there? I probably went too fast here. This is the before compaction and this is the after. I don't care that the total was once $20. I care about my latest total right now, which is 80. That's compaction. And all plays a role with streaming. Uh, the, the way the consumers work all play a role with streaming. And uh, let's take a look over here. So these running totals are going to be stored in something called a rocks DB. Okay? And remember, all these are applications that run on separate machines. Okay? And in each one of those instances, there's going to be an in-memory database called rocks DB 
which will hold that information for us. Okay? Beautiful stuff. So that rocks DB will also get backed up into another topic. So what Confluent, the backing company, does behind all this is they really, 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 really think about everything, about different edge cases of like, hey, what happens if we shut down that stream process? What's going to happen then? Well, every, all my totals are going to be backed up. The moment I do a group buy and some sort of aggregation, that is always going to be backed up in some kind of data store inside of that RocksDB. And that's what's all that about, okay? So that means if one stream process goes out, very much like you saw with the consumers, that if you know, something happens, if we add something, if we remove something, the others, as members of a team, will take over. So that means you're always running. That's the high availability part when it comes to streaming, okay? So very cool. We also have windowing, okay? So here's something that if you have not been uh, using all that much. <clears throat> I think most of our jobs as programmers and data engineers are going to involve a lot with Windows. Because Windows is, are an aggregation. Like how many sales have I made in the last hour would be an aggregation because I, I want that window of one hour. You know, what is going to be the grouping of that? So here's that tumbling window. So these are standard ways of describing Windows and streaming. A tumbling would be Let's say I have five minutes and I want to shift by five minutes. Five, 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 five. Okay? That's a tumbling window. Tumble, tumble, tumble. And you see here, I'm moving by five. Same size as the window. Move by five, move by five. Hopping window is a little bit different. Hopping window is, hey, I have five minutes. That's the size of my window. But my hops are generally a little bit smaller, maybe larger, but uh, smaller. And I want to hop, say, like by two minutes or one minute. I forgot what my animation is here. So I am moving by smaller increments here. Okay. So that's a hop. The, the movement is not the same size as the window. If it is, that was the previous one that we were talking about. This one is a hopping where the hop is different than the size of the window. Now, here's this one. It's called sessionization. Okay. Sounds like a trance uh, CD, right? I just bought sessionization. So sessionization is this. Session is, if there's, if, there are, if there's data alive right now, I wanna make that a window. But at the moment I see inactivity, uh, I will shut things up and call that a window. And that's what a sessionization is. So here we go. I still see some information. So last element has occurred, now I'm gonna wait. I don't see anything for five minutes, okay? Nothing new has ended up here. So what am I gonna do? Boom, make that a window. So here we go again. I see stuff. I'm gonna wait five minutes. Ooh, look at this, two minutes has elapsed. No windowing yet because I'm, gonna, I'm going to take these elements on. And I'm gonna go for five minutes. And let's say right at this point here, my five minutes is up. Boink, there it is, I'm gonna make that a window. And that's a sessionization, something that Kafka Streams supports as well. So let's say there's only this one, and I'll wait five minutes. If I don't see anything else for the five minutes, I'll go ahead and make that a window. So every window could have one element, five elements. And out of these windows, I may want to sum them, get the average, or do whatever I like. Okay? All right. So what does all that mean when it comes to a stream? And I'm very poetic today, evidently. So here's a stream right in here, okay? So I tell it where the servers are, but this time I have a serde, okay? Serde sounds absolutely delicious and you should make a taco out of it, okay? Oh, uh, yo quiero dos tacos con serde, por favor. Mm, que delicioso. Now, that's not what a serde means. Serde means serialize, deserialize. It should have been deser because that's what Kafka does. We deserialize, we consume, deserialize, and then serialize and put it back. But it's called a, a serde, and it's a, it's a very common word. Uh, so notice these here, these are serde. So the key is going to be a string, and the value of everything that we've been producing so far is going to be uh, an integer. The rest is functional programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into this particular topic called my orders, okay? Topic's already being filled up, 
And what this one's gonna do, remember this is just a main method that I'm just gonna run. And what this is gonna do is I'm gonna start ingesting from this and start applying some functional programming to it. What's my first functional program to this? Well, I could use a branch. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look here at this code. I'm gonna start things off with a stream, meaning, hey, attach to this topic first, and this reference that I have here called stream, what do I want to do with it? Well, I wanna do this. So here's stream, here's filter, and so what I'd like to do with this is, hey, if this order, if the key is California, then what I want to do is I wanna dump that information into California state orders. Real time, right? So this is going to hit one topic, and then I'm gonna apply this functional programming uh, to it, that if it has California, then dump that over to another topic. So one topic's just gonna have all the California orders, okay? So, how about this one? This one's a little bit more complicated. This is the second branch, meaning I'm taking the reference and I'm using it two different times here. Let's take a look over here as to what I'm doing. This says here, group by key, which is the state, right, where the orders are located. I want to group by key. Now, I love my IntelliJ from JetBrains, and they're giving away yo-yos at JetBrains, so make sure you go over. And uh, so uh, right in here, here's a group by key. And notice, and, and the reason I say I love my IntelliJ is that they have these, I don't know if you can see it there, it's in gray, right next to it, it says K group stream. Now the type that I started out with on this is a K stream, which represents a flow of data, a stream of data. Now notice the types when things, uh, what they look like uh, when I perform certain operations. So I have a stream and then I do a group by and notice what the type is afterwards. K group stream, which is a representation of something that is being grouped. There isn't much that I can do afterwards that doesn't result in a what's called a K table. Notice what I have. I could do that windowing that I was showing you, like the tumbling window. Um, I could do other aggregations. I could do a count or I could do a reduce. And I think that's it. Not much. So in other words, what I have to do is after I group something is I have to do something with it. I have to perform an aggregation on this, okay? That's the sole purpose of that K group stream. Now, count is the aggregation. Notice what the type is now. And this should coincide with that animation that I was just showing you earlier, okay? Count is the aggregation. Notice the type now is K table with the key of string and the value of long. That's a table that you saw uh, previously. Now take a look at two stream. That's my liquidation. So I am taking a table and I'm liquidating it and turning it back into a stream. And then once I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this into state orders count. This is just so that way I could see what's going on here. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna dump that into state orders count. So in other words, this one stream app, I'm going to ingest information from a topic, and then this is, going to, uh, this is going to run on two different topics, and I'm gonna have information on that. Okay, so in other words, what I'm saying, an input of one, uh, but an output of two, based on the information that's coming in. Now generally, you want to create your streams as an application that you have one focus in mind, and maybe you would create two streams. I wouldn't create like one stream app that would ingest from one and create like <laughs> 200 different topics from it. Obviously that sounds like something's gone wrong. You don't want to stay focused and you want to design things well. So, um, you know, maybe one or two, as long as it serves a particular purpose, I think you should be good to go. So let's give this a run. Boop, 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 boop. All right, uh, let me kill off some of these things in here because I don't need to, who's, where's my producer? I think that's my producer. I want to, I want to keep that running. Uh, let's see, I'll kill this one off. Okay. I'll kill this one off. These are the consumers. I don't need those anymore. And I'll kill that one off. That's fine. Uh, here's a, another consumer. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep the producer running because uh, I wanted to uh, keep uh, generating some information. Uh, let's see, so what I'm going to do is uh, I want to make sure that I create, uh, let's see, California. Uh, here are the California state orders. 
here, let me just do that. So I'll create the California state orders, there it is. And uh, the group, nope, that's, let's not do, let's not create some Kubernetes stuff. What was this called? Sorry about that. This was called state orders count. So I'll come over here and let's do state, uh, nope, state, sorry about that, orders, boy, my typing is, count, there it is, okay. So I'm gonna create that uh, and uh, let me just add a bin here. So I'm gonna create these topics just to make sure I have the same number of partitions and uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna run the streams app. So away we go. So my consumers and my streams, here we go. And failure, great. Nothing like a failure here. Uh, let's see, plug in, yeah, just so I'd worked before here, let me do. Missing, oh, weird. Coming over here, it says the application ID is not there. Okay. Oh, that is true. I wonder where it went. So what it's complaining about is that I need an application ID, which is very much like the group. And uh, let me just go ahead and make this Atlanta group. Yeah, there we go, nice. Okay. I don't know what happened to it, that's kind of weird. All right, so here we go. It said it didn't have an application ID. I'm surprised that was a compile time. Okay, there it is, that's weird. Okay, so this is running now, and uh, it's just an application. I don't, I don't see quite too much uh, going on in here, but I did put a uh, kind of a system out on here, so maybe we'll start seeing some information in here. But uh, let me go in over here and let's take a look at a few things. Uh, let's take a look at the California, uh, C-A-L-A, -A, uh, there it is. Uh, and here's this one here. So I'm gonna take a look at all the California orders and see, here they are. Wow, California's rich. Look at that, all the orders I got from them. Uh, so four orders have gone through already into those topics. They were valued at 53,000, 55,000, 90 and 99,000, man, I am in business, it's awesome. All right, well, let's take a look. I mean, that's pretty cool, but that was just a filtering. Let's take a look at the grouping, because remember that one had a little bit more uh, oomph to it. So uh, that one was a state orders count. Let's see what's inside of the state orders count. There we go. All right, let's take a look at what that one has. And here we go. So this one, notice here that um, this one is keeping track of uh, the orders that are going in. And this should change here momentarily. It's a, running, it's a running thing, right? As soon as new information comes in. And I think it just did, right? Did, did that just change? So it just says in Washington, I have two orders now. Because remember, that was my group by. I'm just grouping by that state. So think as the Kafka ecosystem as this living organism that everything plays a role, and the moment then something hits a topic, real time, so we do something with it. Move, 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 continually keep moving. Let's, let's enrich the data, keep pushing that forward, keep pushing that forward. Maybe uh, um, use Kafka Connect to dump that into a database. That's the idea of this streaming as well. It works perfectly for things like you know, our new way of development on, on Kubernetes and things like that because um, just, you know, with something like Kubernetes, uh, having a single storage and having it um, to be uh, scaled uh, can be kind of hard. Like, try to scale like one MySQL instance where you have multiple pods sharing it uh, could be kind of kind of tough to do. Uh, this, on the other hand, is great for it. It was absolutely built for it that I could have like pods that represent, you know, these Kafka uh, instances and I could have pods that represent a stream and I could have um, you know just as many applications as I need it scales fantastically well okay and that's what the idea is behind us so there it is okay and uh, that's the accumulation and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, shut this down oh yeah here's the output here as what it's been doing so I'll go ahead and shut the stream down I'll go ahead and shut this producer down 
and uh, I'm a happy camper. Now, let me tell you a little bit about KSQL. So, maybe functional programming is not your thing. Maybe uh, SQL is your thing, okay? Um, I like functional programming, but you may like SQL. So SQL would just translate the SQL commands over to the functional programming that you saw, and you don't have to touch the functional programming part. If you're good with SQL, you could query whatever it is that you would like from it. So uh, it's an interface built on the stream processing, uh, also scalable, elastic, fault tolerant, real time, however you'd like. And you can do all of these. Same thing as you can with a stream. Filter it, transform it, aggregate it, okay, and more. You'll instantiate something called a KSQL server, uh, which is kind of like your streaming app that I just showed you uh, not too long ago. The CLI is a way that we can interact with that streaming application, okay? So, we can interact with it, that's the server, okay? We can deploy servers on remote machines, VMs, or containers, and we could run in CLI or headless mode. I'm gonna show you CLI, which is um, the uh, command line interface in which we could just start typing in some commands into them. So, choose your, choose your own adventure. So, what are you good at? Are you good at, um, uh, writing uh, Java-based programmers or Java-based programs in producer or consumer API, fine, use that one. But that's too much work. Maybe you're a functional programmer. I'm going to use Kafka Streams. But maybe let's, uh, let's make things simple and let's write in SQL, then I'll choose KSQL, okay? So starting things up, I'll do KSQL. Here's headless mode. Headless mode is for things like production. You know, I want to roll this out in production. I already have a set of SQL statements and... Um, you know, I don't need to be in like development mode anymore. I can start things off. So this is just starting off a KSQL server with the SQL commands. That's what that queries.sql is for. So I have some SQL commands, just, just run it, let's go, okay? And that's my production mode, it's called headless mode. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. I'm either thirsty or I'm gonna try to describe something with this image here. Um, but I talk about, you know, not necessarily beer, it could be any kind of, this is the home of Coca-Cola, so Coca-Cola comes in kegs as well, and you, you have to tap that in order to get the, the stream out of it, right, of Coca-Cola, or if you're into beer, uh, a stream of beer that comes out of it, right? You gotta open that uh, little uh, keg up. Same thing you have to do with KSQL. So let's say you want to start up KSQL. One of the things you would have to do is tap that keg, okay? And so on here, I could tap things from a topic, and if I see this topic as a stream, remember I have uh, duality here, either a stream or a table. How do I envision the, da uh, the data, okay? Remember, if I have a count and I don't care about the past, that will likely be a table. How do I see that data? But over here, I want to look at something like a stream, so maybe like page views. Who's, uh, who's looking at a particular page uh, up online? That would be a stream. A table would be just like you, like you imagine, key value store uh, that has some information. And let's say the value has things like register time, user ID, gender, and region ID, okay? Uh, and so there's a topic associated with it. Uh, so in other words, I wanna tap that keg uh, and I envision this topic as a table and the value is in a JSON format and the key is uh, user ID. So that way I always have a key associated with it. So I can't do anything in uh, KSQL without either calling these, create table or create a stream. Tap into the topic. I can't query topics, but I could query streams and I could query tables, okay? All right. So here I'm showing a stream, you know, after I create it, and here I'm showing a table. Lots of supported SQL types, uh, various operators, so anything that you're used to with SQL uh, is available here. ABS, uh, mask, if you have some credit card information. L case, substring. The aggregator, what does that mean? That means these are methods that you could only call if you call a group by. What you saw in that functional programming, right? After we did a group by, there were only certain functions that we could call afterwards. These are aggregator operators which is after I do a group by, then I could call any one of these. 
So if I want to group by key and then do a sum for it, then that's going to be the sum of that group. But if I want to group something, let's say, in the value, and I want uh, top k distinct, then I could get the top 10 values for that one particular field that I want to query by, okay? The world is yours. You could query whatever it is that you would like, okay? So I could do things like show topics that are available, uh, show a particular topic, show what streams I've created, show what kind of tables, uh, show any kind of function, show any kind of queries um, that uh, are being made. Now, one of the harder parts to all this is what is a persistent query versus a non-persistent query? Okay, so here's the difference here. Here's persistent, here's non-persistent. Thing I'm gonna tell you here, how do you identify either one of those, is that a persistent will have create table as select, or create stream as select, okay? If I say create blah as select, that means I have a persistent query. And a persistent query is a query that you'll inevitably create a brand new topic as a result, okay? So in other words, whatever I'm streaming is just gonna automatically get dumped onto a new topic. So if I do create table users female, that means I'm gonna have a brand new topic in my Kafka cluster called users female, okay? And what's gonna go into there is select user ID, gender, region ID from users. That users there is not a topic that's uh, at some point someone did a create stream. Here, here, let's go back here a bit. Someone did this, users was a table. Someone did a create table, which was initially tapping that keg. But then this part right over here is we're making use of it. So when it says from users, we're making use of that stream that was previously created. Where gender is equal to female. Now I have a particular topic, or I have a particular table that represents uh, via a topic called user female. That is a persistent query. Again, your answers, your results are just gonna find its way into another topic. That's what a persistent query is. A non-persistent query is, hey, I just wanna look at this in the CLI. That's all I wanna do. I don't need it to go to a topic right now. I just wanna learn right now and see what results I have. So a common thing to do is run a non-persistent query to see what you have and then prepend in front of it, create table, blah, 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 as that, right? So try out your non-persistent query first and then add your create table or create uh, stream in front of that if you want the results of it to go into the topic. Best way to debug it, again, you don't know what you want until you actually see it, but once you actually see it, then you can create a persistent query out of it. So I have about seven minutes. Let me, uh, let me just show you a little bit about uh, what I mean by that. Uh, let's see. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to run ksql. Nope, that didn't do it. <laughs> uh, here we go, one more time, ksql. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's come over here. I'm going to turn this on, which means I want to, I want to read all the data. Oops, you know what? I need to run something here. If you want to know more about this, this is a specialized producer. What this is going to do is that this is going to dump information onto uh, a particular topic, but it's going to have more information for my orders. Uh, what was the cost? What was the shipping uh, decision? What gender? Other things like that. So this is, has a little bit more data uh, involved in it, and that's why I'm sending over. Uh, so let me come in over here. And, um, and here's this, so uh, I just did uh, set, auto offset, reset. And uh, let's see, what do I want to do with this? I think I have something here. Create stream my ever orders. Okay, there it is. So I created a stream called my ever orders. So let's take a look over here. Here is a non-persistent query. Select star from my ever orders. Okay, boom, nice. This is live data and I'm just querying it using SQL code. Cool, right? And I get to see all the information here. Uh, I'll wait a bit here because I think it's only gonna be 20 seconds before something else comes up. So, um, you know, I have the information in here. I also have a timestamp in which that occurred. 
so there's a two-day shipping order from uh, South Dakota, uh, West Virginia, and more and more. Okay, kind of cool. Here, let's try something else. And we'll uh, field some questions in here. So that's a stream. How about we do this? Take a look at this one. This one's a persistent query. So in other words, from this one, I'm not going to see any output from this because the output is, uh, actually, I think I would, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I don't think I'll see output. Well, let, let's give it a run. So create table, my shipping orders uh, with partitions to as select. So it has that, that form, create blah as select, which means this is a persistent query. So in other words, that select statement, whatever the results are going to be from this, uh, and here, let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Let me just show the select first. Like I said, it's nice to do a non-persistent query first to see what this is uh, going to look like, and here it is. Because now I'm selecting a running total, a group by shipping, because I'm doing the shipping and the count. So I'm selecting what the key is going to look like and what the value is going to look like. Okay? This is a running total. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, stop that query. But now let's say that what I want to do then is I want to do this. I know what the result of select shipping count is going to look like, so how about I do this? I don't see an output. So in other words, all the information now has gone into my shipping orders. So what I could do is I could do this. Select star from my shipping orders. Beautiful. I love you, KSQL. I love you forever. All right, here we go. And there it is. This is on another topic. So you could kind of like start getting your nerd drool on because you're like, whoa, this looks cool. Because from one source of a topic, you could just branch out and do so many wonderful things with it, either via KSQL or Kafka streams and have another topic that is a different perspective of the data that you started out with because maybe you're interested in that different perspective of data. Let's say you're in a large corporation where you do shipping and you have a shipping center in Houston and you have a shipping center in San Francisco. You know, that shipping center in San Francisco doesn't care about all the Houston orders. A nice filter would be nice for that. That, that, that way they only see that particular data, okay? Or whatever kind of data that you want to envision. And the thing about Kafka is that the moment something hits your particular topic, you'll see a different perspective of that topic in less than a second anywhere downstream, okay? And that's the idea for all of this. So let me just uh, 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 sum up right over here. So uh, take a look at the slides. Again, I don't have that much time here, but the uh, conclusion is for all this is that there are a whole suite of tools, uh, many that are open source, some are not, uh, but you, know, you could produce data and send that over to Kafka. You can consume data from Kafka, which let's make that point here. That shipping information, that's in another topic. So if I want to create consumers to read off of that topic, well, totally, let's do that as well. Uh, so again, world is your oyster here. You can produce to Kafka, you can consume from Kafka, you can take information from a topic and dump that into a database. These little cogs that you see here are just stream operations that you run on, on different machines and all they do is just take information from that partition you know, do some maps, do some filtering, do something with it, manipulate it, and create another topic with a different perspective of data. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay? All right. Any questions? Do it. Joining? Uh, I only have 50 minutes, but yeah, you could join. Yep. So you could take two topics, join them together. Left join, right join, inner join, um, aching joints. Yeah, you could have all those. Yeah. <laughs> All the messages? Yes. No, you're going to get a, a grouped, uh, an aggregate representation on a K table of something else usually. Like how many orders in Ohio, how many orders in California is usually what that group is. Now, you can make it whatever it is that you want, but a table represents that. It will keep all the entries in there unless you have compaction. That's why I said compaction was so important. So like in my example, I had Washington 2, and then you saw Washington 3, Washington 4, Washington 5. By default, all that stays in that topic until a week from now or two months from now, whatever you have, unless you turn on compaction. 
So compaction would be, hey, let's just keep the latest Washington, let's keep the latest Illinois, let's keep the latest South Carolina. You would have to turn compaction on. So wherever there is a K table representation for whatever topic is backing up that K table, um, more than likely you want to turn uh, compaction on for it because you don't care about the past. But you have to ask yourself that question, do I care about the past or not? If you don't, turn compaction on because all, all you care about then is the latest value. Okay, cool. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again.